Peace Bridge in Bellic links the counties of Donegal in Ireland and Fermaga in Northern Ireland. Although the area was heavily affected by the troubles, for almost 20 years people have been crossing from Ireland to the UK without even realizing. However, Brexit could change that. Where I live, I have to cross the border twice before I get to my house, which is only over the road. Yeah, and it's not a half a mile away. The island economy um, does not recognise the border at the moment simply because of the fact that both the north and the south of Ireland were in the EU. To change that in any way creates major problems for agriculture, for industry, for small businesses. Everybody's worried about the consequences of Brexit from the farmers through the producers, the processors, and even the hospitality industry as well. There's an awful lot of our food ingredients come from Europe. My concerns are around the supply chain, being able to get the raw materials, being able to export the food that you make, labelling, and also a product of geographic indication. Everything's really up in the air, and for the last five, six months, we have seen people really concerned and stopping investing in food businesses because they just don't know what the outcome will be. With Brexit as it stands, we still don't know if we're getting a deal or no deal. So we're restricted in how much planning and preparation we can actually do. Um, customs, paperwork, regulations, um, labelling standards, quality of ingredients, right the way through our, to even to our supply chain for bringing goods in. We bring in glassware from France, from Italy, we bring stoppers from Italy, our labels are from Ireland. Our supply chain is, is extensively based across the EU. Anything which creates barriers is, is very problematic and it can also have a destabilising impact on, on other aspects of, of life here. You can go half a mile from here in three different directions and there would, be, there, there would have been a, a, a British Army military installation. Um, this place was uh, very heavily controlled by the British Army, by the British state. Uh, the border was very heavily patrolled. So people remember that. I remember it and they remember all of the difficulties and dangers that came with that. People are very afraid of that coming back. When, when the first customs post was built in Uri, um, and then the customs post gets attacked um, and police officers then have to go in and guard the customs post on the border and then um, the police are attacked over a period of time and then the army come in to guard the police over a period of time and when the army are attacked they built things on the border. You don't never stand, start it off with the intention of having 12 army watchtowers and helicopter bases but it's how security then, then builds up in response to events and attacks. There's always that possibility that the violence could flare up. It's, it's going to be up to people like myself and other community leaders to ensure no matter what kind of Brexit comes that we'll try to keep, keep a lid on it. But in a kind of vacuum, you never know what's going to happen. If it's a hard Brexit, it's going to be devastating. But even if it's a, a, what they call a soft Brexit, it's not going to be good for the people here. People living on the border, any border, it doesn't be good economically, socially, community ways. I've never seen a, a customs uh, on, on the border and I don't know how I would react or how maybe some of the other young people. So it's important that we, we prevent that because I think it's, it will be a bigger reality shock if it does come about. We never seen anything other than peace growing up, like we never seen the harsh borders or anything like we cross over the border and don't even realise we're crossing over the border. So I think it's good that we all keep the peace, I don't want to change like. When I was talking to Commissioner Barnier here, I was explaining to him, do you see the border over there, Commissioner? And he said to me, nowhere. And I said, that's the idea, you can't see it. And the, the idea is to keep it that way, whatever the result of Brexit is. Brexit in Northern Ireland is not only a political or an economic matter. Here, it is a threat to fragile peace. This isn't just about trade and tariffs here. Um, I know that's what a lot of the debate in Brussels and in Westminster is about. This here in Northern Ireland is about identity. Well, we fear that our Irish identity, our Irish citizenship, will be challenged and, and compromised by the whole Brexit adventure. 
personally, I'm a unionist, but I voted to remain. Uh, but through the course of Brexit uh, negotiations here, I found myself getting increasingly irritated by the attitude of the uh, Irish government and indeed uh, their European uh, partners in terms of the hard line they're taking around Brexit. Most things here uh, tend to divide up on orange and green issues, as they call them here. And we have uh, Republicans now. There's an old saying that they see England's difficulty as Ireland's opportunity, and they've become more aggressive in their pursuit of a, a united Ireland. If there is no agreement on the future relationship by 2020, the entire UK would be part of a customs union, with only Northern Ireland remaining aligned to some of the EU single market rules the so-called backstop. Essentially what it does is separate Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK, uh, constitutionally uh, and, and economically. First of all, um, Northern Ireland will be treated differently from the rest of the United Kingdom and, and, and as a unionist, that's something that I don't want to see happen. My, my whole reason for being in politics is to maintain Northern Ireland's place within the United Kingdom. And what the backstop would do is, is, is take us away. It would essentially make us a, a third country uh, to the rest of the, of the UK. It would place barriers, regulatory barriers, uh, in the middle of the Irish Sea. And that's not something that, that we want to see happen. The polarisation of society into British and Irish as a result of Brexit is, is a very... It, it, it could do harm to, to all that has been done tonight. The European Union was instrumental in helping us achieve what we did in the Good Friday Agreement, but it was also the fact that the European Union provided the space for Irish and British to meet, whether it be Brussels or elsewhere, and again to get to know each other better, learn from each other. Now that is being removed and it is more than unfortunate. Brexit is bad for the United Kingdom, but it's much worse for Northern Ireland. What Brexit has done, it, it has highlighted the division. It has, has, it has made the division more stark and more difficult to deal with. And I think what it'll end up doing is it will mean that those people who, uh, even from a traditionally British background, who believe in the European Union, who want to be part of a global world, who want to be part of a, 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 an economy and a, and, a, and a society that actually looks out for people and wants to protect the environment and wants to protect animal welfare and wants to be part of a, 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 a European economy. I think those people will begin to choose change, constitutional change in Ireland because they will see it as, as their only option. Now, in a way that's a very positive thing but all of that division and tension needs to be managed very, very carefully. I don't find any evidence, certainly within the unionist loyalist community, of any appetite to return to, to violence. Having said that, it's wise not to be complacent, because when I was a young man many, many years ago, I didn't think that we would slide into violence either, so it's wise to be careful about how uh, we deal with the current situation. To be honest, I don't know what way it's going to go. Um, the, you know, the conditions that led to the conflict back in 1969 and 1970 no longer pertain. The British, the British Army are not in military occupation of vast areas of, of the, the North. The, the, the circumstances for, um, for violence and for armed actions, I don't believe that they are there. But who can say, you know, what's going to happen in the future? I'm afraid that the minority will lead the majority. And, and that kind of bit says that I don't believe that people want to go back to the way that it was. Nobody in their right mind wants to go back to the way it was. Um, I don't want to go back to the way it was. I don't want to see my kids leading the life that I led. Um, and not being able to go places and then who your friends could be and who they couldn't be. Um, do I think that? I think it's up to our politicians to make sure that that doesn't happen again.